Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the greatest time of the day. From the center of the universe, New York City, it's the main event you've been waiting for. It's time to go in the cave! And we are back live and in living, living, living color on this nice July 10th day in 2017. And I'll tell you... It is so nice to be in an air-conditioned studio because there's no AC in my house. I sweat all day, and, and, and honestly, it's so nice to be out. There's so much to get into this week right now. Um, I am wearing my Mickey Trainer from Rocky t-shirt because there's a lot of boxing stuff in the news mixing with MMA this week. Um, but I just want to remind everybody, go to In the Cage with Cyclone on Facebook. Hit me up on Twitter at CYCIE19. I had to think about that for a second. You figure I would know my own Twitter handle. Read all my articles on boneheadpicks.com and keep checking cyclonecomedy.com. And I promise you once again, eventually that site will be updated. When? I don't know. We're going to be talking about International Fight Week. Um, I was supposed to have a guest in in the co-pilot seat, but, you know, when you're doing live shows, things happen. you got to roll with the punches in life. So it's just me. It's whittle, whittle, oh me. Yeah, like, I'm really little. Okay. But, anyways, all that and a lot more starts right after this. This is Frank Edgar. This is the Barbarian Tim Boach. I'm World Series of Fighting undefeated lightweight champion Justin Gaethje. Yeah. MMA legend, UFC Hall of Famer, Ice Man. Check it out. And if you got the guts, step in the cage with Cyclone. All right, we are ready to start this shingding off, shall we? Here's the thing. This week is known in the world of MMA and combat sports despite many people hating it, as Connor and Floyd Week. And it all kicks off tomorrow in the Staples Center out in L.A. And I'm telling you right now, my nipples are literally hard. It is going to be crazy. You put the two biggest yappers, the two best yappers on this planet, on the same stage going at it. The only thing I'm going to assume... And I know what happens when you assume is I give Conor McGregor maybe maybe two minutes before he looks at Floyd and says, listen, the only thing you ever knock out in your life is women and kids. I mean, it might be considered over the top, but let's face it, it's out there for Conor to say it. And if it's out there, you know Conor's going to take it. But then they... They rush right back to the airport in L.A. They fly to Toronto. Then from Toronto, they come here to the Mecca, to to the, to Gotham City. Well, not really, it's Brooklyn. More like the, 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 the red-headed stepchild of Gotham at the Barclays Center. And yours truly will be there. Well, I'll be there, I hope. See, here's the thing. The Barclays Center has said they only want this presser to be mobile ticket only entry. And here's the thing. Those of you who know me laugh at me all the time. Those of you who don't, please don't start laughing. I have a flip phone. Yes, I understand this is the new millennium. I This is the new generation. I should get a smartphone. But number one, I don't want to be dumber than my phone. And honestly, number two, like I tell the people at Verizon, 
I've never had a job call. I'm not changing phones until I get a job call. And I'm not in a rush, by the way, to get a job call. But, uh, yeah, so I talked to the people at Ticketmaster, and then it turns out that they're not allowed to make hard tickets because the venue wants it mobile only. And then I told the woman at Ticketmaster that I only have a flip phone. And she said, are you serious? And I'm like, yes, please don't you start laughing at me now. But, <laughs> and I begged and pleaded with her, what could I possibly do? And she said, we can send you an actual hard ticket. We could FedEx you one. And I'm like, okay, that, that's doable. I accept that. And then she dropped a bomb on my head that there is a possibility security will not let me in the building with that hard ticket. And I'm like, listen, what if I have, you know, the, the, the email proof, I have the confirmation number, I have the hard ticket. What if I show security my flip phone? And the ticket master lady told me that security might laugh at me and tell me to get out of the building. So I don't know if I will actually be in the building on Thursday, which sucks. And here's what sucks even more. I went on the Barclay Center seating chart, and apparently the seat that I picked is behind the stage. So I'm probably going to have to watch it in an uncomfortable seat because that's all there is in the Barclay Center is uncomfortable seats on a monitor. And by the way, for them to rush that 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 hard ticket cost me $15. Not that, you know, I'm not complaining even though I'm a Jew, I'm not complaining about $15 money, but here's the thing. $15 to sit on an uncomfortable chair, one butt at a time, for a couple of hours at a clip, and have to watch it on a TV monitor, I could have done that at home, but I just want to be in the building because Conor McGregor events are freaking nuts. That's a long way to go, folks, for a bad punchline, but it is what it is. All right, uh, so... That is this week. And then, by the way, right after the Barclays Center, they then fly to Wembley Stadium in London. Yes, they actually got Floyd to agree to fly to London because I know originally he wanted no part of it. But, hey, eventually he was going to have to give on something, right? Moving along. There was some breaking news this morning. LFA, Legacy Fighting Alliance, this weekend, Angela KGB Lee was going to be fighting uh, Davina Maselli. Here's the thing. That fight just got called off. She, uh, Angela tweeted out. She Instagrammed out. Apparently, Miss Davina can't get the right visas from Brazil to head into the States. So... She no coming. Fight is off. Apparently, they can't even get a replacement a week out, which boggles my mind. Usually, a week a week out is still good enough time, but Angela said that they can't find a replacement, but she's coming to the arena anyways just to hang out with people. Now, that's great. So, not only is she hot as hell, she's awesome, too, and that's awesome. Uh, the Pro Fighters League started, and uh, here's the thing. I don't mind them changing names from World Series of Fighting to Pro Fighters League. That it doesn't bother me. They could call themselves the Pizza Hat Wearers. I don't care. It's all about the talent. And they did manage to lose the majority of their talent. Look. David Branch is back in the UFC. Marin Marias is back in the C in the UFC. And the highlight himself, Justin Gathji, is in the UFC. So they lost the majority of their top guns. They still have Andre Harrison, who I like to call Little John Jones. Um, but 
when you put your talent through a bad situation, it makes no sense. Look, they, they crossed over with NASCAR, and, and that's a brilliant move. Because nine times out of ten, if you like NASCAR, you're going to like MMA. And vice versa. Well, yeah, I guess that would be redundant of me. But either way, you like one, you're going to like the other usually. For them to open up with their first card in Daytona, what should have been after the Truck Series, I think it was the, it was either the Truck or the Arca Series. Was it? You know what? I don't even remember at this point which of the NASCAR Cup Series it was. But to have your event outdoors in Daytona in July, you're asking for problems. It, so what, here's what happened if you don't know. The, the, the race wound up getting shortened due to rain. So they started the PFL series two hours early. Okay, fine. So now you have NASCAR drivers walking around saying, yeah, I'm here to see some people fighting. And they don't really get and they don't really understand the whole idea of the PFL. And more than three times during the four fights for the PFL, fighters were slipping and sliding on the mat because of the heat and the humidity outside in Daytona. And you can't have that. So, they, they, they need to rethink their, their outdoor think, thinking. And honestly, to everyone who wants Max Holloway to defend his title in Hawaii, there are no indoor venues good enough. And Max was saying that we have outdoor venues. That right there is the number one reason against having an outdoor MMA event. The last outdoor co out, you know, combat sport event I can think of was Ali against Foreman in Africa. And if memory serves correct, and I'm old and my memory fades a lot, there was a lot of slipping and sliding. There was a lot. There was a torrential downpour, as a matter of fact, during that fight. And, and you can't put your athletes at more risk than is necessary. They're at enough risk as it is. So you don't want these guys falling and and, and slipping and sliding. Uh, fight night global. 70 was this past weekend before I get into all the good stuff. And nowhere did they announce any of the results. It is the first time in my memory. And like I said, I'm old. I lose my memory a lot. I can't ever remember seeing a company hold an event and not release the results. I was up literally all night on every single website, even on their own website, and they weren't releasing the results. And it, I, I, I'm dumbfounded by that. But now let's get into the fun as we move along to the real enjoyment of this week. The Tough 25 finale in Vegas, UFC 213. Let me grab some notes on that, which is, which is, okay, the, the, the highlight as far as I'm concerned for the Tough 25 finale, it was really nice to see Angela over Kill Hill. A Brooklyn girl get her first UFC win. Didn't think it was going to wind up going the distance. Thought she would finish Ashley Yoder 
a lot sooner. She had her in trouble. I give Ashley credit. She, she hung in there. Uh, and I get, look, a win is a win is a win, right? You, you're never going to poo-poo that. But winning a unanimous decision, I guess, is good enough. Uh, the welterweight 20, tough 25 finale uh, between Diego Lima and JT Money, Jesse Taylor. Now, here's the thing. Diego was in town the week before for Bellator 180 with his brother Douglas. And a couple of us people at the hotel were asking him, hey, what's going to happen at the finale? What's going to happen at the finale? And he's like, you got to watch Tough. You got to watch the finale. I can't tell you. And I'm like, come on. There's nobody listening. Dana's not going to know. Just tell us. He's like, no, I can't tell you. You got to watch. And it's sad to see. Look, he, he fought valiantly for as long as he did. Um, for those of you who are still unknowing, he tapped out to a rear naked choke in the second round. And look, he had said earlier in the week that he trains really hard. He trains really good. If for any reason this fight doesn't go as good as his training goes, he's calling it a career. And honestly, I hope that was just talk. Seriously, I, I, Diego still has a lot left in him. And by a lot, I mean at least, yeah, I don't know, six or seven-ish type fights left in him. I think that would be, you know, a good enough, you know, before he calls it a, a rap on a career. Uh, and then, what a finale. First of all, as you all know, people who know me, know I have been all over Justin Gathji since World Series of Fighting. I told everybody that this kid is the real deal. And to quote a couple lines in the movie Rocky, okay, he definitely needs to use his head like a windshield wiper. You know, you go side to side, you know. He's going to wind up getting, like, serious brain damage. And he's someone who says, I don't care. Knock me the hell out. Knock me the F out. Hit me in the head. The fact of the matter is, I got really friendly with his dad during... Uh, World Series of Fighting on New Year's here in New York. And I'm sure his dad, his mom, his twin brother are telling him, look, you don't need to stand there and take a punch to the head. You can duck. You can move out of the way. There's no law against it. And honestly, I'd, I'd like to see him kind of move away some, from some shots too, you know. Uh, but... Where I knew Michael Johnson was in trouble was earlier in the week when Michael started popping off and talking smack about uh, Justin and his parents. You Look, you want to talk smack about Justin, I'm sure Justin doesn't give two, two Fs. But when you bring up mom and dad, that clicks in somebody, especially someone as crazy as Justin Gathjee. When you talk about his mom and dad, I, ju I just knew that's when the fight was going to be over. And I'm honest. Look, yeah, Michael had Justin in trouble. <coughs> See, we don't have a cough button, so. Oh, well. And, you know, I should have brought some water for myself. But anyways... The, the, he had him hurt. He absolutely did. And what keeps Justin standing? Who in the hell knows? This kid takes shots all over the place. 
I remember uh, Luis Firmino just literally beat the snot out of him. And he just kept coming. The harder you hit Justin, he keeps coming. <coughs> Excuse me. And as a matter of fact, once he TKO'd the menace, he he was so exhausted it took him three tries to do his uh, leap off the top of the cage, which apparently, by the way, the UFC people got to him and have fined him for that. So, <clears throat> I really got to go shopping for water next time. Um, after the fight, I give Justin credit. You know, when you, when you beat the number five guy, you want to go to a top-level guy. So, he calls out... Uh, Tony Ferguson. He's willing to fight Khabib. He still wants to fight Edson Barboza. And Edson will wreck Justin's face, by the way. Um, But then he also said he's willing to fight Conor McGregor in Dublin. And that is just asking for all sorts of problems. But you got to give it to him. The kid has heart. His heart is as big as my gut. Okay? And my gut, by the way, just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, (coughs) Moving on to 213. Look, there is a lot of heat and a lot of smack being talked about Amanda Nunes and her not wanting to fight. This is a girl that retired Ronda Rousey and retired Misha Tate. She took out two of the best female MMA fighters ever. She has never missed weight. She has never missed a fight. She has never backed out. Yeah, the doctors medically cleared her. But here's the thing, especially a woman's body. And and I'm not some feminist, you know, but here's the thing. If the human body doesn't feel right... It doesn't matter how many medical tests you pass. If you don't feel right, there's no way in hell you should get in a cage. Look, Dana White always says, oh, if somebody feels like they want to retire, they should definitely retire. Well, if someone doesn't feel right on the inside, no matter what the tests say, then guess what? They shouldn't fight. And yeah, I get it, you know, it's it, it sucks for, for Valentina, you know, but quite honestly, to be selfish, for guys like me who have to write stories after all these cards are done, let me tell you, one less card, card ending a little bit earlier, makes it easier on my life. As a matter of fact, a couple of friends of mine know that I always say before every single card, hey, I hope two or three cars, two or three fights fall off hours before, only so I could try to catch some sleep afterwards. But that's just me being selfish. Um, so, yeah, she falls out. And then Joanna Jonjacek begs and pleads Dana through social media that she's willing to fight Valentina. And her and Valentina actually have fought three times in uh, Muay Thai. And Valentina is one all three, which, by the way, is in, even though Joanna's a beast, it's not surprising. Va- Valentina, Muay Thai wise, is seriously dangerous. But let me just tell you, I think it's high time Joanna gets a nickname. And I, for for everyone listening, go on social media, hashtag this. I want Joanna Jonjacek to now be called the Wolverine. Because Wolverines or, and or Badgers, you know what, you could call her a Wolverine or a Badger, I don't care which. That needs to be her nickname. Because for her to want to do that, just hours before, you know, no training, no nothing, hey, I just want to go in and fight, that's, all, that, that, that's what makes Joanna so awesome. And, and it's great to see, now look, 
said, you know, for her, you know, Vegas rules, you know, title fight, you can't, you know, have someone step in. Oh, thank you. You know what? I got to give right now a round of applause. Nice round of applause to my producer, George. I, no, I am not Nick and Nate's brother, Diaz. Agua, yes. Of course, now that I have the agua, I'm not in the mood to cough anymore, <laughs> which is the story of my life. Dollar late, buck short. A lot of things short in me. I'm Jewish, and I'm just going to leave that at that. I'm getting old. I think I've said that a thousand times already. But th that was impressive that Joanna wanted to fight. Uh, Yoel Romero and Robert Whitaker, the new main event. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Robert Whitaker, and this is like the first day that I've not called him Forrest Whitaker. He, he, this kid is on a freaking roll. He's now won eight in a row. His last two are against Jacare and, and Yoel. He's beating everybody. And if I could be on a fly on the wall in the houses of people like Chris Weidman and Luke Rockhold, I would love to see what those two cats are thinking. You know, and let me say this before, you know, we, we take a break. Um, Michael Bisping sitting Kate side. He has a lot of heat with Yoel. For him to come into the cage after the fight's over and throw his belt at the feet of, of Whitaker and say, you're a poser, you're a fake, I'm the real champ. Here, take my belt, I'm going to beat you anyways. That's all fine, well, and good. I got no problems with it. But... He somehow managed to get his hands on Yoel Romero's Cuban flag. For him to rip up that flag and then throw the pieces at Yoel. He's lucky Yoel didn't jump on him like a spider monkey and rip him piece by piece by piece. Seriously, look. I know, I know. There's like a, a some sort of a law that you can't mess with um, money. That it's like a federal crime. You can't mess with the mail. It's like a federal crime. I seem to remember a lot of people wanting to push for a federal law that you can't mess with flags either. And here's the deal. Yoel hasn't seen his son in. I think it was 11 years now. It's either 10 or 11 years. Because his son is down in Cuba. And there was a whole thing, obviously, between Cuba and the U.S. You, do, as, as much as a hard ass as, as Yoel can be to fans sometimes. Dude, you can't rip up a man's flag. Th that's, that's going beyond... Smash talk. That's that, that's over the line. That's like a, like I think it. It's borderline illegal, honestly. And he's really really lucky. He didn't get popped for it. Um. But Yoel did the presser. You got to give the guy credit. Came in and, and usually losers don't do pressers. He pulled a Conor McGregor. Came there, answered every question, had smiles on his face. You know, showed respect to a lot of people. And that's what makes that guy great. Okay? And for everyone who says, oh, he's a steroid user, he's a steroid user. He was popped once. He has taken countless drug tests since. And he hasn't failed a single one. Therefore, he's not... A steroid user. He has a freakish cartoon type body, yes. But he's not a roid user. He might have in the past, not in the present. But later on, we're going to be talking a lot of stuff right after this quick message.
Hi, I'm Jim Miller. This is Dan Morgliata. I'm Derek Brunson. Hey, I'm Nick the Carney Lentz, and you're locked into the cage with Cyclone. Now, guess what? Later today, because I'm just kicking this shingding off here at, at BWRN, we have a full day of shows. Number one, right after me, there's a little bit of a break, but then it's Clayton Fletcher and Al Martin, the owner of this awesome establishment, coming in at 4 p.m. They're doing the Broadway Comedy Club radio show, which is all things funny, all things serious at times, you know. But that's a great show. You guys need to stay tuned on Spreaker to listen to that. Then at 5 o'clock, Grace Carney stopping by with In Your Face with Donnie and Grace. And then at 6 o'clock, oh my God, the two, I, I'm forgetting the, the names of the two Muppets that sit up in the orchestra. That's what Jeffrey Paul and Kevin Guti are like. The, the, the two old geezers yapping on the Sports Books Box Office podcast with Jeffrey Paul and Kevin Goatee. They'll be talking all sport, all things sports. And I guarantee you, I know how the two of them work. They'll be talking Connor and Floyd, but they'll be talking as just a fan would talk because those two aren't the MMA guy. Who's the MMA guy? Yours truly, Cyclone. Okay? So that's your long-ass day right here on BWRN. So listen to all of it. Just a reminder, In the Cage with Cyclone on Facebook, click like. We have pay-per-view raffles. I just raffled off a $45 official Reebok hat. And it was won by Brian Haran, who always whines and complains that he doesn't win. Yet, let's see. Let's see what young Brian has won. He won tickets to... um, He won cage-side tickets to Bellator 180 NYC. All right? That should be enough. He won tickets to 208. Now he's winning stuff on my show. And it's not like I'm letting him win. Because trust me, if it was up to me, Brian, I wouldn't let you win. You win too much. Plus, you lost a lot of weight. You have a hot girlfriend. Life is done by good by you. Not so much by me. But I'm letting it slide. It's all all numbers game, buddy. You win, I got to give you the props. Okay? Check me out on Twitter. C-Y-C-I-E. One nine. I'm going to have a lot more articles coming up soon. Boneheadpicks.com. Read them all. You could comment. If you scroll down at the end of the article, make your comment. I'm always answering comments. And then check cyclonecomedy.com for everything I do. Eventually, I'll get back into the comedy. When? I don't know. There's so much MMA stuff going on. Don't know when I have the time. But it's something I definitely want to get back into. I think. I don't know. Comedy is a tough game. I think I'd rather actually step into a cage than maybe do some stand-up. I don't know. That's a tough call. But moving along, later this week, and besides, you know, the Connor and Floyd stuff, is uh, Dana White, the Contender Series... And he actually, look, the man's allowed to call his own shots. The man's, the man's at the level where he can do it, okay? But he's having Snoop Dogg be one of the commentators. Okay, fine. Uriah Faber apparently is doing play-by-play, and Snoop is doing color commentary. Number one, I don't care how big of a fan Snoop is. I don't have anything against Snoop. Do we really need a commentator sitting there doing color who's going to do it, let's face it, as high as a freaking kite? There's no way Snoop is going to tell Dan, yes, I'm coming in sober. He's not. He should have to pass some USADA tests 
to let him co- do some commentating. But I will say this. If Dana is going to open up the door to celebrity type people to do some color commentary, Mr. White, I am not hard to be found. I am easily seen. Dana, I have a degree in broadcasting. As a matter of fact, I'm only full credit shy of actually having it as a bachelor's degree. Dana, Mr. White, Bubula, Paisan, Cuz, whatever you want to call yourself. Please think about me doing some color commentary. Because I think that I think that is like my 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 golden ticket, my my the, the dream that I have. I want to do some color commentary for Dana White. Um but we have that. We have what else is coming up? Oh, Bellator 181 with uh it is the It is the uh, Campos Gertz trilogy fight. They've each won one. Uh, Campos taking unanimous decision the first time and the second time. Uh, Gertz knocked him out in the first round. I think this time I, 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 the, the title is going to stay with Camp, Derek Campos. He's a tougher fighter at this stage. He's stronger, he's faster, he's better on the ground, his stand-up is better, his intro music is better. I, I don't see any place possible where Brandon Gertz is going to be able to pull off a win. But uh, that's headlined for Belto 181. You have Legacy 16 in Dallas. Now, check this out. I know it, you can't be too PC these days, but the world is gone way too far in PC level. Legacy 16 in Dallas, Texas, is being held in an arena called the Bomb Factory. Now, I'm just thinking, do you really, really, really with the with the way the country is with the see something, say something, and, and the high alerts all over the place all the time, do you really want your venue to be called the Bomb Factory? I mean, it's... Look, I don't know what I would ca- call it, but I think I would reconsider that name very much so. Uh... Invicta 24, Ashley Cummings is uh, fighting in the co-main event against uh, Jin Yu Frey. And Ashley, you know, Felice Herrig just said recently that, that she isn't getting the push from the UFC because she's not a pretty female, which, first of all, that's not true. I mean, she's hot. Of course, and again, my standards are like, if you're dead, you're okay by me. Ah. <laughs> but, um, you know, seriously, George, there's nothing wrong with doing, like, a dead check. The only problem, because they never say no. The only problem is they just lay there like a bump on a log, as my grandmother would say. But, yeah, Ashley, she fits that cookie-cutter mold of bring, being the pretty type and and being the one that's going to get the push. And now that a lot of the Invicta girls are UFC, she's going to start getting a much bigger push from the people at Invicta. Then is UFC Fight Night Scotland because, God forbid, the UFC let other companies have a weekend to themselves. God forbid the UFC take another weekend off. Dana's always out. Look, I shouldn't say Dana's out for money. 
WME, IMG, the new owners are always out for money. Because let's face it, who isn't out for money? Okay, we're all Jews. The whole planet, the whole planet hates Jews, but yet we're all out for money. It's one of those great conundrums, one of those great oxymorons in the world. But uh, I want to do one of my little segments now, my spotlight segment. And I want to, you know, when I said I want to spotlight a fighter, I always want to do spotlight someone that no one's heard of, that is brand new on the scene, just coming up, and I think is really impressive to look at. But here's the thing. I think I want to spotlight spotlight Jared Cannonier this week. And I'm going to spotlight him, not because um, for 208 week, I happen to have called him Derek Brunson a couple of times. And yeah, I get it. Not all, and he even he said it to me. Not all of us brothers look alike. I'm not Derek Brunson. Which, by the way, made me feel really stupid. And I don't know why I called him Derek. They are nowhere similar in body types. But, you know, you got to fess up to your mistakes. And I'm fessing up to mine. Here's the thing. Jared Cannonier just quit his job at the FFA. At the F. AA. He was working for them for the last eight years. And he gave the job up so he could concentrate fully on fighting. And I give him props because there's a couple of fighters I know personally that one in particular that is a bassist in a guitar band. And he's decided to go bassist over MMA. And I've given him crap for it, honestly. But I... I I give Jared a lot of props. Now, Jared hated fighting on the tough card this weekend because it was on Shabbat. And apparently, Jared follows high Jewish law. And I find that interesting as hell. And one of the reasons I find it is interesting as hell is he's not Jewish. And he, by the way, is not converting either. He was raised a Baptist, but yet he follows high Jewish law. And I I don't know why. I just find that so goddamn interesting. And besides the fact Jared, you know, is on a nice little winning streak of one right now, you know, winning this past Friday night, but he said if he prefer if he could have his way, he would never fight on a Shabbat or a Shabbos ever again. But he needed the money, so he had to do it. And I get, I get, this guy deserves a lot of credit. I mean, that's like wow, you know, that's a big deal. Uh, I think you know. I think it's time to pick a number. For the Facebook question. So, you know what? I'm not going to do it myself. I'm not going to. I have my my little baggie of numbers. I'm not doing it myself. You know what? George. Yeah. We have 19 questions. So pick a number between 1 and 19. 12. Okay. So, here's the deal. Whatever, I'm I'm going to be counting them down. So whatever it is, it is. So Brian or John or whoever doesn't win, I don't want to hear you're complaining. So let's go on to the Facebook page like all of you should be right now. Let's see if I could count to 12. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Wait, I can't count. That's beautiful. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Well, how do y'all like that? Okay, Brian, you want to say how you're not lucky? You just swept the weekend. You won the hat, and now you're winning the the Facebook question. Your question: Who should be Frank Mir's first fight in Bellator? 
And I'm going to assume you're asking that because Frank Mir finally, after years, got his release from the UFC. Uh, it should be one of two people. And Frank actually came out late last night and said he wants to fight Fedor Emelianenko, or as your girlfriend calls him, Fedor a million ankles. I say this. I think that fight makes sense. Fedor is coming off of a loss. Frank hasn't fought in like forever. It would be a decent fight. The other person... Who would I want to see Frank Mir fight? Uh, that guy, Wren. I, I believe it's Robert Wren. Um, but he is uh, the big guy w- with long, crazy hair. Not named Roy Nelson. Let me... Just double check on that. Uh, no, I was wrong. Big surprise. It's Justin Wren. Yes. I think uh, the, the big pygmy, Justin Wren, would be a good fight with Frank Mayer. I almost think because Fedor has two fights left on his contract... With Bellator, that Scott would make it that. But then again, it's not official that he has signed with Bellator. So to say who's he going to fight in Bellator is a bit of a jumping of the gun. But yeah, I say if not Fedor, Justin Rennan. It should be one of those two. You don't want to put him in with like a killer like Czech Congo, you know, because that won't end pretty at all. Uh, moving along, I'm going to do a brand new segment that I'm just starting this week. On this day in MMA history, and don't worry, folks, I'm going to have a jingle hopefully soon enough for that. But On this day in MMA history, July 10th, absolutely nothing. Nothing happened on this day in MMA history, which sucks. But, however, I'm going to do like that Facebook thing where it says on this day and and they have some things that weren't on this day. Tomorrow on this day in MMA history, July 11th. 2009, at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, Nevada, on Spike TV, was UFC 100. Wow. I remember that like it was yesterday. You had Brock Lesnar against the aforementioned Frank Mir, with Brock tearing a hole in Frank Mir, winning by TKO in the second round. Um... I think it was early in the second round, too. You had uh, GSP beating the snot out of Diego Alves, who, by the way, I still need to have signed on my UFC 205 poster. Uh, And you had Hendo with with that H-bomb punch upside Michael Bisping's head. That put Bisping to sleep. All that happened tomorrow on this day in MMA history. And how will that be celebrated? By Connor Floyd Presser, day one. So there, that's on this day in MMA history. I might as well, you know what? I might as well just keep rolling along. I'm grabbing... Now, this I got to do with these. I bought these stupid raffle tickets because I thought I was a genius and I thought I was reinventing the wheel. But the dream fight 
is between, let's see, number 20 and number 72. Oy vey. Number 20 and number 72. Wow. This is actually not that bad. I thought it was going to be worse than it was. In the red corner, middleweight from the legendary Gracie family, Roger Gracie. By the way, a certain member of the Gracie family will very soon be a guest here on In the Cage with Cyclone. That's just a little bit of a side note. And number 72 in the blue corner. He is now part of the PFL, formerly the World Series of Fighting. Also, oh, Walter Waite. None other than Mr. John Fitch. Wow, you know what? John Fitch's ground game... And BJJ is is absolutely awesome. As a matter of fact, at, at the World Series of Fighting card in Madison Square Garden's theater, people were booing because him and Jake Shields were rolling around on the mat so much. Because they just people, a lot of people out there just don't get that. That's really what MMA is. It's not the two guys standing in the center of the cage throwing down. It is the two guys doing the BJJ on the mat. But can anybody really beat a Gracie, especially Roger Gracie, on the mat? Jeez. I don't know. You know, I think, I honestly, if, if I, wow. Putting a gun to my head, like I'm doing right now, yeah, I, I, I'd say Roger would win that fight. I would. I would. I hate to say it. I, I like John. I like John a lot. But I, I, I don't see him. I think just the Gracie blood alone puts him over the top in that one. So, we've done the Facebook question. We've done the dream fight. We've done on this day. We've done the segments. So I want to throw out a quick reminder that all of you should check out In the Cage with Cyclone on Facebook. Click like. Win prizes, much like Brian Haran keeps winning. Hit me up on Twitter, CYCIE19. Check out my articles on Bonehead Picks. And then check everything out on CycloneComedy.com. It's that simple. Stalk me. I want to have a stalker. I don't care. You know, seriously, I want you all to stalk me. Stalk. I don't care how crazy you are. Stalk me. I'm cool with it. I really, really am. See, you laughed, George. You know, it's when people don't want you that upsets me, you know. And there's plenty of people that don't want me, all right. I would like some people to want me. You know, the only fans that blow on me are, are the fans I have in my house, and that's just hot air blowing on me. But guess what? The next time I'm around will be Monday, July 24th. So, until July 24th, when it's the same cage time, the same cage channel, a little bit of throwing out of a Batman shout-out, you know, because nobody loves Batman more than I do. Just remember, like I always say, just because you cannot be an athlete doesn't mean you cannot be an athletic supporter. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.